ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, I'm Jim Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to the Aragon Ballroom here in Chicago. First round underway in this scheduled 10 round. Well, Tyson sees this just about every time he steps into the ring. He's up against a taller man. Yeah, but he also understands that once he starts getting close, guess what? That guy becomes a midget. Targeting a left hand down low. Tyson's the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target. Get the combination working, land both punches. He gives as well as he takes. You saw it on that exchange. You see him zeroing in with that left hand to the body. Ninety seconds to go here in this round. doing what every trainer wants to see their fighter do. Land punches and punches. The combination lands. Staying away from those headshots with his defense up top. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Turns over that hook upstairs. So right from the start in this fight, he's committed to the body shots. Well, that's the time to go there right at the beginning because body work pays off for you later in the fight. No sense in wasting time. Get right to it. Tyson's missing punches. I mean, there's just no way to sugarcoat it. His accuracy isn't there. And there's a reason for it, Joe. His punches are the wide variety. And wide punches gets what? They don't find the mark. They're not accurate. Well-targeted two-punch combo by Muhammad Ali. He has his target. He lands a straight right. Tyson's three-punch combination there is going to impress the judges. Committing to the work downstairs with the left. Takes a step back, then the counterpunch by Muhammad Ali. Very similar to what you see Floyd Mayweather do. You know, make a miss, pull that shoulder back, and then come right back with the counter. Wow, what an uppercut. Digging in with a left to the gut. Oh, a nice two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. He just missed that shot up top. Teddy, many famous fighters, especially heavyweight champions, are known for their signature punch, like Rocky Marciano and his Susie Q. But for Muhammad Ali, he's known for his signature shuffling of the feet, the Ali shuffle. Yes, he is. And, you know, it makes me think a little bit sort of like if you were going to buy a real fancy car. You know, when somebody wants to sell you something, wants you to believe in them, they give you something first, maybe a band or entertainment, and then they take you to the showroom. And, you know, now you're ready to see the car. Well, that's what that is. That's the band. That's the entertainment. And then the show is about to begin. And it's an unbelievable show with those quick hands and those combinations. Tyson's commitment to throwing punches in that last round really scored well for him. Round number three is underway. Body shot, body shot. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. Nothing there on the punch by Mike Tyson. 
Tyson's impressing the judges and himself with that right hand. Lands flush with the two punch combo by Mike Tyson. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. Counter punch up top. Ali's nailed by a huge uppercut. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. A stinging uppercut by Muhammad Ali. Halfway through this round. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. Got to be accurate to send the combination to the body, and he does that. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. He got hit right there, but he also gave one. Solid effort by Muhammad Ali. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Boy, sharp two-punch combination by Muhammad Ali. We count down the final moments of this round. And that's the end of round three. There you go. So three rounds are in the books here. Tyson's up two rounds to one on Teddy's scorecard. Punch stats don't always tell the story, but in this case, he's been the busier man, throwing more punches. Yeah, but he's also had to do a lot more work just to keep his opponent off him, just to keep him defensive. Does that hurt him as the fight goes on? Well, his opponent is opening up and coming forward, so I would think there are some opportunities that exist. Yeah, I think some counter-punching opportunities. Opportunities not on the front end, but on the back end. They trade shots. He comes back with a right hand. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Halfway through round number four. There's the combo to the body. Good step back, counter punch there. Beautiful. Turns the favor with a right hand of his own. Go, Go. Took a shot, now he gives the left. Fires right back at him. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. Fourth round now with its last 10 seconds. End of this round, Joe and Teddy sitting ringside with you. It gives us time to reflect on the bigger picture of boxing. You know, it was interesting. We had a fan walk up to you earlier today and say, hey, I know you learned everything from the legendary Custom Auto, the great trainer. And he said to you, what's the one thing you took away from all your years with Cus? What did you say to him? Well, it wasn't a paycheck. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> because Cus didn't believe in paying you for that. He said, you're going to college, you're getting a valuable uh, education and you're not even being forced to pay a tuition so I understood that we worked seven days a week so there was no union uh, cuz believed in working on Sundays so you couldn't go complain and say I'm being overworked but I think seriously that the most important thing that I learned of course that from a technical standpoint you have to be really secure in those areas no matter how much talent a fighter has you have to teach them right teach them the fundamentals but mentally you have to understand that a fighter's 
really always under fear. And you have to understand those dimensions, those parameters. And you have to be able to find a way to get in there, understanding how he feels mentally, and understanding how that can impair his judgment, stop him from doing simple physical things. Very accurate two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. Flush right hand to the head. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. Ali's right hand did a nice job that time. That worked well for him. It's hard to believe that at this late stage of the fight, both men are able to give as much as they are given. This is how you find out where somebody is brilliant. This is where you find out where somebody is special and does extraordinary things by pushing them to a difficult place. Final 10 seconds of this fifth round. There's the old one-two coming after him. The start of the sixth round. Tyson's coming out here at the start of this round, knowing that the first half of this fight clearly has him out way in front on the scorecards. Yeah, you know, sometimes guys don't do good when they're way out in front because they start letting up a little bit. They start taking things for granted. That is probably the only thing that could be an enemy of him right now. Muhammad Ali's banged by an uppercut. Mike Tyson's so dangerous with that accuracy, a two-punch combination landing. Unable to score with the uppercut that time. Muhammad Ali's tagged! Trying to erode away that body with the combination punching. That is a classic Tyson uppercut. Tyson's really doing a fine job here, Teddy. I know everybody falls in love with the clean, effective punching, but you can make an argument that he's controlling this fight right now thanks to his head movement. Yeah, you know, it makes me think about that legendary story about the old great Willie Pep, the Will of the Wisp. There was a legend that he actually won a round without throwing a punch just by making his opponent miss, just by ring generalship. There's the combo downstairs. Ali's got a way of just getting away from that punch. How about a return to sender with the left hand? Left to the body. Mike Tyson with a big uppercut. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Big left hand from Iron Mike. And round six comes to an end. Mike Tyson's gathering himself right now in the corner, and his trainer is really doing him a good service in reminding him, yes, to this point, the later stages of this fight, you're in control, but still, go out and do everything we talked about in training camp. Keep it going. Off the target by Muhammad Ali. Defense easily turns into offense. Blocks a blow, sends an uppercut. They both decide to bring it. Ali with a right hand. Right to the body. Ali's got to be moving more than this, Teddy. I mean, you cannot win a fight just standing stationary like this. Well, you know, if his opponent could have, he would have gotten him to sign a contract and say, hey, I want you to stand right in front of me all night long so I can do whatever I want. And he's doing whatever he wants. Scored well up top. Iron Mike with an iron right. There's another left hand from him. Good 
flush shot by Muhammad Ali. Coming towards the end of the seventh round, 10 seconds to go. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Muhammad Ali. Teddy's scorecard has him trailing by a significant margin here as we start round number eight. Is there any hope that he can get back into this fight? He doesn't look like a guy that can. There's always hope, Joe. I mean, that's what this business is about. It's about finding ways, about overcoming. Right now, he needs to ask himself the question, am I in or am I out? Good looking right hand after he got hit. Able to cover up that gut. Good combination to the body. And now he brings the left hand upstairs. Locks it away. You see, he sits and waits and then strikes with that counter punch by Mike Tyson. He does it again, Teddy. He's really made a commitment to the body work. And you know, that's only half of the problem for his opponent right now because you know what's coming late. He's going to climb the ladder. He's going to go upstairs. Able to block and counter back. Well off the mark by Mike Tyson. There he is, working the body. That worked out really well, throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that. He needs to improve the accuracy a little bit. That was comical by Muhammad Ali. Uppercut by Tyson. Tyson's opponent now is getting, oh, that uppercut got him badly. And he catches a lucky break. Saved by the bell here at the end of the round, Teddy. Yeah, right away you're thinking, you know, where do I spend my time right now? You want to tell him things that can help him, but he is really groggy right now, so you got to get him clear-minded first. Comes right back at him with a left. Could this be the start of a big comeback? He went from owning this fight to now nearly down and out. You know, that's what makes boxing so great. Yeah, you can come back just like that. One punch at the right time. That was at the right time. Ali's got those earmuffs on, and he's got his hands tight against his body. But, Teddy, still, some things are getting through. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like driving a car, Joe. You know, and the, the weather's a little bad, and you say, I, I want to be safe here. I'm going to stop the car. You don't stop and park the car in the middle of the highway where cars are coming. I mean, he stopped right there in the middle of the highway. Cars are coming. You know, pull off somewhere. You know, get the heck out of there. Find the right parking spot. by Muhammad Ali. Unbelievable work there, landing a four-punch combo. Up top with the right hand. exactly what the game plan can be now. That counterpunch landed with some success. 
As we're between rounds now, Teddy, it gives us pause and time to reflect on what he's accomplished. Tyson's precision punching has carried this fight. Yeah, and I'll tell you, it's not because he ate a lot of carrots when he was a kid and he has real good eyesight. It's because he's calm, he has good technique, and that is why he's right on the mark. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Ali's mounting a comeback here. Big shot there. Targeting that head and landing with a bomb. One, two. Tyson's getting back up to his feet after being knocked down. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. And now he... Wow! Remember earlier, he was on the canvas. Now he's looking down on his opponent. And we thought it was a bad thing earlier for him. It turned out to be a bad thing for his opponent because he got careless here. Two, three. Ali's able to get up. Teddy, I question, though, if he'll be able to go on. What does he have to do? Well, he's got to know what to do, but what not to do. Don't use your legs. Don't try to move because that's the inclination. Get on your bicycle when you've been hurt. No, the bicycle's not there. You got flat tires. What you got to do is grab on the inside, clear your head. Talk from the Louisville lip. Now he's got to prove he's got some guts. Muhammad Ali is down again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ali beats the count, looks across the ring at his opponent, and you know that this is going to turn into a big-time fight now. Blocks the headshot. Ali's hurt. Wow. Oh, a big shot comes home for him. Muhammad Ali goes down. Ali is down, and his opponent put him there with a precision, perfectly placed power punch. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Muhammad Ali's ability to get up and survive that knockdown has to be admired. But I don't know if it's going to last much longer here. Scores well to the head with the right hand. That was a dominating performance tonight. Yeah, this is one you would think there's no drama in the reading of the scorecards. Let's hear those scorecards and send it up to the ring. Tyson's performance tonight was exactly what he was looking for. And it's exactly what the judges reward. Good, solid effort, a unanimous decision. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore.